I'm Deborah Holchip, editor of Michigan Today. Next time you're in Ann Arbor, you have to come visit the Michigan Union. It reopened in January after an 18-month renovation, restoration, rehabilitation, and all-around makeover. It's not the first facelift for the building, but this has been the most extensive, well-planned, and complete rework of the campus gem since it opened in 1919. The price came in at $85.2 million. Half of that budget focused on invisible upgrades to energy efficiency and sustainability, with an estimated 37% energy savings. The rest of the budget went toward dazzling visuals that surely would have pleased original architects and alumni Irving and Allen Pond. The union actually rests on the site of the Pond's childhood home. The multicolored leaded glass windows, signature arches, and decorative details are just some features that define the brothers' design aesthetic. I spoke to the architects at Hartman Cox in Washington, D.C., and as you'll hear later, I met some welders from Detroit who installed the ironwork in the newly enclosed courtyard. Most of the workers are gone now, but for a few random electricians who, it seems, are never finished. Oh my God, do you guys feel like the last men standing? Oh, yes. Every single day. <laughs> Every job. You're always the last. Everybody's almost done. They're like, oh, you know, we really want The main floor's footprint now matches the original 1919 floor plan, including a huge fireplace near the main entrance. Your hostess with the mostest, Susan Pyle, Senior Director of University Unions and Auxiliary Services, is eager for you to see it. Here's Susan. fireplace naturally will draw people in so I think about alumni coming back for homecoming or football weekends like I think it communicates come in and have a seat and be welcomed here at Michigan be welcomed at the Michigan Union mm -hmm. um, that we awesome. didn't have that space before down there it felt like am I allowed to go in there or we had a couple couches and they were always full and there was no place to sit um, mm -hmm. and this new space is really inviting in a way that says welcome come in and have a seat and I think the historic detail and the historic character of the building has been refreshed in a way that I think is really special to this building that will enable that to carry forward for another hundred years. Hey, welcome to the union! <laughs> and the study lounge, of course, is still on the first floor where it was. Uh, and again, we heard from students that don't mess with the study lounge. <laughs> I'll never forget a student said, I feel like a Michigan student when I study in there. Yeah, so you've got true. this great study space and you have this great um, social connection, vibrancy um, happening on that floor too. So I think it all just sort of speaks to the role of the union on campus and really fostering both of those things. Yeah. I think it takes a special skill set and I, why I value the architecture team that we had because we were able to sort of meld those ideas that, that history and historical architecture can be current and future and how do we continue to evolve the building so that it, it does meet those needs of the future. This is Michigan and our students are worthy of a beautiful space like this. Um, looks beautiful, it's massive, um, looks very modern. Also comfy. It's for student orgs too, and I'm like deep into um, Startup Career Fair, which is an event that I'll be hosting in February, February 7th. And so a space that says, hey, like work on student stuff, I, I want to be here for it. Um, just allows for a lot of open communication and sharing of ideas, which is helpful for the university in general. So we are two of the directors of Dance Marathon, and we're here just to kind of get some stuff done, answer some emails, make sure that we're working together and getting everything set for our biggest event in March. But we think this is a really awesome area to have these little cubicles. I haven't really sat down in the courtyard, but I think this is like a beautiful addition. It really like I think it modernizes the union and it kind of sets it apart. Like I've seen Ohio State's union and it's gorgeous and I think it kind of puts us in that bar up with them too and like in a respectable area and even just the conference rooms here too is just like a new bar which we've needed for a really long time and now we can utilize space that we just haven't been able to before and it's just very aesthetically pleasing. All right, well, there's some early endorsements from your typical overachieving Wolverines. We had Nate Fielkoff, the entrepreneur, freshman Hana Yu, and Dance Marathon's Maddie Kent and Lauren Rach. And speaking of aesthetically pleasing, the most visually stunning element of the union is the newly enclosed courtyard. Remember that open-air patio outside Starbucks, which is now Sweetwater's? Alumni. 
Today the courtyard is inside the building, covered by a glass roof supported by these huge steel columns. They're almost curved like palm trees to echo the pond's signature arches. I actually gasped when I saw it the first time. I just feel like I need to come in here and let people just sort of take it in for a moment because it is um, so different than what we had um, prior to this. Um, this was exterior space, um, open air. <laughs> Certainly Michigan weather makes it challenging, made it challenging for us to really use this space with any kind of regularity or sense of community. And uh, we didn't have the budget nor really the square footage uh, around the building to, do, uh, to expand the building. But this was a way for us to really capture space that would be meaningful to the building, would add this sense of vibrancy and connection and create really a nice connection between the first and second levels of the building. What we uh, heard again from students as they were helping us in the design process was that they wanted this to feel like an indoor diag, that they wanted it to feel like a place of serendipitous interaction and connection with lots of things happening at any given time, um, needed the block M in the middle of the courtyard to replicate the diag, um, and that block M was actually located on the fourth floor of the building and has now been moved down um, here to the courtyard, will be much more visible and uh, enjoyed Does by Does it come with the users, same, so. you know, rules? You know, uh, <laughs> we've been asked that question, what the what the campus lore is going to be about that, and we, it's not up to me to make those just decisions. Make so just come up with I, I think our I think our students will uh, will certainly come up with yeah, something absolutely. pretty great for that if I had to guess. During a recent walkabout in the building, I came upon three of the craftsmen who transported, installed, and welded those giant columns. They too were marveling at the finished product. First, you'll hear Jesus Molinar, project manager for Detroit's Ideal Contracting, followed by iron worker Bill Kinsinger. Bill's daughter is a student at U of M. Here's Jesus. I'm talking about, you know, all the sweat and tears that we we put into this building. It's been amazing. The final product, it looks awesome. I can't imagine. Yes, and if you would have seen before, but when we tore apart everything and opened up everything to install the steel, it was way different. So you guys are the ones who installed the steel? And these two guys right here. Oh, you guys, it's so beautiful. I really didn't know it was that important to the university until I saw it on the news. Yeah? You know, but yeah, it's it's a nice building. It's, it's an old building and it's very nice. This all changed so from what it was. This was yeah. outside, right? Yeah, there was windows right here. This was all oh, windows. Okay. This was all exterior. Yeah. So people really don't they, they see it, they don't understand what it took to get it here. I mean he he's my welder, he welded all this together. These came Whoa. out these came out in four pieces, these trees, they call them trees. Mm -hmm. And I had him weld them together and make it look like one piece. It was never you know, it it took some time and we did it in the cold in winter, but I mean, it looks good. We come out here now and go, man, remember that? That was hard, <laughs> you, know? you know? Yeah, it's like big dreams, you They know? flew them yeah. in blind from the street, from State Street. I saw the picture. Flying yeah. in. Yeah. And then these guys were directing it. Bill was outside coordinating. These guys were receiving down here. Pressure. Yep. And they told us what we were going to do, and I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> Trucking it here was a hard thing, too, because it's big. Yeah. You know, and it came up the street, and they were going to bring it up State Street, the tops in one piece. And I said, we can't. Well, I'll wipe out every parked car on State Street. I said, Thank no. <laughs> Thank you for caring. You know, I said, we have, to, we have to bring it out in pieces. It was a challenge. And then the, the upper dome, actually, our fabricator, which is our company, we built it on the ground in the shop, wow. put it together 100%. Didn't weld it. He was there. We welded a lot of it up. And then we took it apart in big chunks and shipped it here. And where did that happen? In down in Detroit, okay. off of Clark Street at Ideal Contracting. Okay. I said, I want to make sure this fits when we get up in the air, <laughs> you oh, know? Oh God, yeah. yeah. I told my daughters in school here, and I said, man, these kids really want this space. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my dad did yeah. this. Yeah, she wandered. She would wander through every once in a while, I said, when she needs money. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so, so. great. Yeah, I'm happy for her. She was. She yeah, kept asking me. I said, I can't take you in there. You can't see this till it's done. I can't give you show you pictures. Oh, that's so funny. You know, because yeah. they kept asking all her friends, "Is it going to be done?" I said, "Oh, it'll be done on time." Yeah. Though you'll be tempted to look up, up into the open air of the courtyard, iron worker Tijan Lossier wants to draw your attention to the floor as well. Listen in. Here's Tijan with Bill Kingsinger and Jesus Molinar. One thing I gotta, you probably don't see these things. I was just telling Bill this morning. You see that hardwood floor? Uh-huh. Well, they look like little pieces square. Uh-huh. These were installed piece by piece. No. That oh. long, 
Yeah. And then tell them the stories about that. Yep, they, they, that's Mesquite hardwood from Texas, okay? Right yep, so they, it's end grain. It's only about a half inch thick. Each, each block is individually laid, one at a time. Wow, that's amazing. And it, that's they worked around the clock. I want to say about three and a half weeks. Yeah, you only see one floor, you know. You don't yeah. see all the piece, uh, piece by like a yeah, puzzle, you know. Twenty-five thousand pieces or whatever. Oh my God! <laughs> and the floor base too, because after the floor, the wood floor got installed, and the base had to be cut piece by piece, because the floor has waves. So you don't want when you install that metal. Gap. Yeah, you can have gaps oh, up and down. Yeah. So because these guys were measuring each piece. That black steel base. There's a lot of labor putting that in. I love it that. It looks like crown molding, but in the floor, all that, uh, it's all steel. That's steel. We That's had to a... cut it to fit. Wow, yeah. beautiful. You it, guys are amazing. Would, and they would always ask me, how long is this going to take? I go, oh, never been done before. I don't know. Well, here's, I have a question. Like, what's it like to work on a building that you have to kind of match or marry the old with the new? With this building, it was very, it was difficult because we would open up that old part from 1950 and you go, Huh, that's not what the drawings, it's all different. We were just talking about over here where this steel's tied into this building mm -hmm. over here. They had a drawing that was from the 1953 that told us what we were going to be tying into, what it looked like, and we cut the wall open and I said, we got a huge problem, it doesn't look like this at all. Yeah. So we had to go re-engineer everything and redesign it, and how are we going to make the connections, and there's a lot of unforeseens here when we yeah, opened so it up. That's, you, yep. This guy it. here was one of our... I was chatting with those guys outside the Idea Hub, formerly the union's billiards room. I know, I know, everyone loved the billiards room, but so few people used it. There are 1,600 student organizations on today's campus who now have space to do business. Some of the tables actually are repurposed from the union's long gone bowling alley. When I told cognitive science junior Nate Fjellkoff he was sitting in the former billiards room, beloved to so many nostalgic alumni devastated by its demise, he looked at me like, okay, boomer. Like, the, the day that the union opened, there were some food trucks, and this guy, like, all the students were waiting for food trucks, and this guy comes out, and he's like, you know, this, the union used to be the best place to play billiards. <laughs> <sighs> Look what they did to it. Left. Oh, okay. This is way cooler. So you get the idea. Students are loving the new building, and you probably will too, even without the billiards. You've just got to come back to sit by the fire, wander around, and notice all the details. Those colored panes of glass, that courtyard floor, the wrought iron, the throwback light fixtures, and some newly revealed limestone arches that lead straight into the future. Okay, that's it for now. Find Listen in Michigan and subscribe at Google Play Music, iTunes, TuneIn, and Stitcher. We'll be back for more next month. Until then, as always, go blue.